muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos a Tu Historia. Hi, and welcome to Tu Historia. I'm your host, Carla Barnes, and I'm here today with a new guest who is coming in today, and he is a junior in liberal arts, and his name is Giovanni Salas. Please welcome Giovanni. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hi, Giovanni. Uh, hi, hi, hi. So um, thank you for coming in today. I appreciate you taking from your time to come here. And we want to get to know a little bit more about Giovanni and his journey and his story. So Giovanni, tell us a little bit about where you're from and your story. So I was born in Mexico, Chiapas. Um, but my parents migrated here when I, was, uh, when I was three. So I didn't really grow up in that Mexican culture. I grew up here in the United States. Uh, We moved to North Carolina in Asheville, and uh, ever since then, that's where I grew up. Oh wow! So you were born there, but you don't you don't really remember anything, do you? No, I don't remember. It's it's just from childhood memories. There's nothing really that I know about Mexico. So yeah, I don't I don't remember anything from when I was three. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't think you remembered anything. Yeah. But um, so about Mexico. Mm -hmm. Have you visited Mexico? No, but um, I'm planning to, uh, over the summer, I want to go visit my, uh, my grandparents and uh, my uncles and cousins. Yeah, so it's always it's, good to go back to the family, you know. And yeah, no, they're waiting for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm always so excited about it, too. Yeah, they're really excited. Oh, that's awesome. So we want to get to know more about where you come from in Mexico. And we have pictures in the screen that are going to pop up, and we want to see... Um, just tell us a little bit about that place and just like the name of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been to. Have you ever been there? Um, Especially to that that one. You can look. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's actually a, a place called Cristobal de las Casas. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And well, I've never been there personally, but I have uh, cousins who have told me that that place is just, it's gorgeous and there's a lot of color and a lot of Mayan people too. Is it a church? Um, there is a no. It's just, it's a it's like a town, like a oh, okay. like a kind of um, city, mm -hmm. and um, it's just it's well known because I'm pretty sure it's named after Bartolomé de las Casas. Do you remember that oh, yeah. we studied him <laughs> in Spanish? Giovanni was also in my Spanish class, so we learned about Bartolomé de las Casas there. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. So um, this place, you never been? Would you ever want to go visit it? Yeah, no, I de that's definitely one place that I would love to go. It's I'm really like uh, fascinated by like the indigenous people there, so mm -hmm. that's why what's my main reason why I want to go and see. Them. Yeah, I, it's always also good to go back to the roots and then the people that were there before. It's great to know the history, yeah, the historia, definitely. you know, the historia yeah. of where you come from, mm -hmm. and for people to also know where you come from as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next place we want to go, there in the pictures. It's that, which is like a pyramid kind of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, this, um, th there's a lot of pyramids around mm -hmm. Chiapas because, uh, y again, you know how we studied uh, the Mexican culture? There in near like Chiapas and what's Guatemala, there's a lot of, there was a, a lot of like uh, Mayan people there. So the pyramids are well known around the yeah and it, it just looks beautiful you know to see all that and yeah. think about what people did before us and how it still oh. stands and you can still see it i know hopefully you go to these places when you're back there yeah <laughs> it's gonna be so fun oh my god i want to go exercise actually, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all them stairs right my brother actually went to mexico with his girlfriend because mm. she's mexican and they i don't i'm not sure if they visited that like chapas mm -hmm. but they went to mexico and they visited all over the place mm -hmm. so it's just beautiful like he had all these pictures of it it was just really beautiful he was like in a horse and everything wow. <laughs> so. he was in the yeah he was getting his feet dirty <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah that's great okay so now i want to transition to talking about here and mm -hmm. how you were raised so mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit more about your family like how they raised you and how even though you weren't born there you have traditions within your family, like Mexican traditions? Yeah, so when you come, well, when you come into the States, like, you know, you get, um, you, you start getting new, um, you st <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're um, fine. Yeah, <laughs> like coming into the States, you lose a lot of those traditions from yeah. where you come from. 
So coming here, uh, you know, of course we had to learn the language. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like a barrier um, because, you know, we talked Spanish. So uh, coming in here, coming to the States, um, my parents uh, sent me to school. And uh, that's where I started learning Spanish. I mean, it's not Spanish, English. English. That's where I started learning English and really, really settling in here um, and just uh, adopting the American culture more than my Mexican culture. Yeah, so, and you were born, not born, speaking Spanish, but like they raised you speaking Spanish. So that was your first, right? Yes, that's, yeah, I would say that's my first language. Yeah. My first tongue. Yeah. <laughs> was it hard for you to learn English? Um, like, well, do you think you got confused when you were little? Did, did, or was it, like, natural for you to learn? No, I think it was natural. I think oh. it was because I, I think, like, when you're uh, young, when mm -hmm. you're younger, you know, you're still learning. So for me, I think it was easier yeah. to learn. It's, it's difficult, too, because, like, for me, I came here when I was 10, like I've said before, and so for you to see is natural, that's really good because you grow with both, yeah. you know, and so. Yeah, and you're like, you, you're fluent in both. So. Fluent in both since you were little. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people can say that. That's a really great benefit that you, you know, got to be here and learn both since a young age. Mm -hmm. D does your parents speak it well or is it like a little bit harder for them? Um, yeah, it's a little hard for them because they didn't go to school here. So, like, I know you're probably the same way that you had to translate and mm -hmm. for, you had to translate for them. So, yeah. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit more about you mm -hmm. and your journey through school. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about what you're thinking of, your vocation? Yeah, so I'm actually, uh, after graduation here at Newman, I'm planning to uh, go into a religious formation. So that takes like uh, three years of formation in the Franciscan uh, lifestyle. And after that, then you go on to your seminary studies where, you know, you study for, you study theology and philosophy and, you know, eventually be ordained as a priest. And so that's, it, it takes a while. I think I say eight years, maybe. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Long journey ahead of you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. So how did you come up with, like, this vocation? Like, from a young age, were you always kind of, like, leaning into it or did it just come you know, suddenly that you felt as though you wanted to pursue yeah. religious life? <laughs> Definitely suddenly. Um, it wasn't like I didn't grow up as a child like, oh, yeah, I want to be a priest or anything like mm -hmm. that. I think it was until I was 16 when I really, uh, I would say, like, receiving the calling from God. And that's when I started to, you know, pursue that. And so it wasn't until I was 16. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... Why Franciscan out of, you know, all religions? Yeah, well, um, I think, like, the Franciscans are more uh, fraternal. Um, so they live in a community, mm -hmm. whereas, uh, like, you know, like uh, uh, regular diocesan priests, they live in, like, uh, they, they live by themselves, basically. Okay. And uh, they work in parishes, mm -hmm. whereas the Franciscans, they don't, they're not really in parishes. They're more in community and being with the poor and things like that. So that's yeah. one reason. More sense of, you know, family and, and yeah. community oh, yeah. in it. Yeah. Were you always religious, like growing up? Or was it like when you said when you were 16? That you yeah, I, I, my parents never really went to church um, when I was younger. I think we start, I started going to, um, to church when I was like, 13 or something like that so hmm. yeah is that one of the reasons you chose Newman because Franciscan yeah that, that that's one reason too but then the other reason is that um, how I said I grew up in North Carolina mm -hmm. so here they have the Francis there's a, a Franciscan community so that this is where this was a school closer to that community so. okay so yeah. it's kind of like it was easier but at the same time it fit what you wanted yeah exactly yeah, but it was hard to leave home, of course. Yeah, I can imagine, like the family and, yeah, oh, and everything. Kids. It's always hard. <laughs> I know. Always hard transitioning. So now with your degree, like you said, um, how does the liberal arts major 
fit in to what you want to do? Yeah, so I think um, I always ask that same question. Uh, and here, you know, they offer a good uh, theology, philosophy mm -hmm. uh, classes. So that's really what my focus is, is trying to get as many of those classes that I can that will prepare me for my future. Um, so I think, you know, with the liberal arts major, I'll be able to do more with it in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, and it also, you know, can help you. It's not just, you know, one thing you're learning. You're also getting different courses in oh, here yeah. too, right? Yeah, definitely. Lots of different. Yeah, that's it's great. It's great yeah. to learn. <laughs> okay, so now um, we talked about your roots and we talked about your vocation. Mm -hmm. Now you told me, this is a little like sneak peek you told me before, that your favorite food was tamales. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about tamales for those that don't know what tamale is. Yeah, so tamales are like the best food <laughs> out there. Uh, if you ever go to a Mexican restaurant, definitely ask for tamales. And basically what it is, it's um, it's it's like a cornbread kind of uh, kind of dish mm -hmm. that has chicken inside, um, and it's usually wrapped in a uh, um, corn skin. Oh. And uh, like we see back there. Yeah, like we see back there. <laughs> those delicious tortillas. <laughs> and they come in different. <laughs> they come in different uh, flavors, of course. Like um, some put beans inside. You can mm. like you can do a lot of things. You can put um, cheese inside. You can put jalapenos inside. Custom them to your own taste. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and they get steamed, right? Yeah, they get yes. steamed. Yeah, and huh? Go ahead. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the Puerto Rican pastel. I don't know if you ever had it, but it's different in that like the ingredients itself is different, but the way it's prepared is kind of the same. It's kind of like put in um viandas, I don't know how to say that in English. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then you get you put the chicken inside or pork mm -hmm. and then yeah, you put in the leaf and then you steam it and then when it comes out, you know. What is it called? Pastel. You know how to? Pastel. No, no, pastel. no. It's not a cake. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it kind of sounds no, like no, it's no. pastel. Because um, pastel kind of means cake in other places, but for Puerto Rico, it means that. that okay. For cake, you say <laughs> bizcocho. Bizcocho. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, we see right, right see here. I something new. I learn everything. Yeah, we learn everything new. And, and this show is about that, learning your story and learning how people are different because we are all different, you know? Definitely. And we get to see the differences, but also... What unites us and is that we all are different. I don't know. It, with the difference, we find unity for me. Yeah, Because, you know, I, we're different, but we're also the same in that we all go through something and then we're all trying to get somewhere, like a vocation or something right. like that, too. Yeah. I mean, we, like, uh, share our human characteristics, probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great. So, um, I've honestly never had a uh, tamal before. My oh, brother has. Yeah, like I said. Right. Because he has a Mexican girlfriend and she has made them. And a funny thing, he went to um, Mexico and they were giving it to him so much. He was like, I'm tired of eating tamales. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ever get tired of eating tamales? Or? <laughs> it depends. Depends. It depends who makes them. <laughs> that's, a, that's also something like I, I don't eat just regular tamales. Okay. I got, like they have to be my aunt's or my mom's tamales because... Mm. They know how to make the best. They just have the hand. They have the special touch. Tienen la cocina, tienen ese punto. Yeah, <laughs> Every, yeah, it's it's great with them. Yeah, I mean it's true. Like you, you were born eating their food, so then you, you don't you don't really trust people with your food. You know? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it you can't find it at a restaurant or anything. Yes. So. That's great. Maybe one day I'll try it. Maybe we'll come back in another episode, and he'll bring some tamales, and then. We'll get to try some of those. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I'll try some pat patel. Patel. <laughs> patel. Patel. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. and then right here, real quick, we have a poncho, which mm -hmm. is yours. Can you, like, show it real quick for sure. people? This is kind of like a, uh, for people that don't know what poncho is, it's kind of like a throw-on jacket or yeah, it, something. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, like a, it's a blanket in mm -hmm. a way, because, mm -hmm. like, if you want to feel the material, it's pretty Thick. Yeah. So, you know, it keeps you nice and warm. Snuggy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's very, it's big. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's big. it looks it's really big. <laughs> and it's heavy. 
But okay. yeah, this this is where you put your like you know you put it on and mm -hmm. your head sticks out from here. That's basically it. I bet it's very warm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Have you used it here in the U.S. ever? Um, it, only in my house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can you can probably wear it for school one day. Maybe like Hispanic Month, you can wear it. We can do something here. We can all like wear something. Yeah, yeah. That's that pretty cool. cool. See, we get to know a little bit more about you and this is like. Indigenous people make this, right? So this is how it all started with them. Yeah, usually because, um, you know, they love, uh, in Mexico, like colors is something yes. that is important. So you can see like a lot of colors. And That's just, beautiful. It's very vibrant. And yes. I feel like I'm selling <laughs> <laughs> We're not selling. We're not sponsoring. Again, like last week with the candy, we were not sponsoring that. We're not sponsoring the poncho. But if you want to buy it, you can go to your nearest Target. It's like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, but <laughs> honestly, they, I don't know, I feel like the American culture has kind of copied them because I have some things that like I throw on and they kind of look like those, but less heavier and less warm. So yeah. order it from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, but yeah, maybe. thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. This was a great time knowing more about you and your story. And it was really amazing to see how Mexico, you know, it's here at Newman University, which is great because not a lot of people know that a lot of people don't see beyond, you know, like minorities. They don't see a lot of Hispanic people here. So it's great that this program is also bringing you guys into here and um, getting to know your story and telling it from your point of view too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank and you for this me. is great. <laughs> this is all the time we have today. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Tune in next week for another episode of Tu Historia. Muchas gracias y adiós. Bueno.